Today, we're going to learn how password-protected files can be cracked using a tool called Zydra on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you have sensitive files on your computer, such as a PDF of your tax records or a zip containing sensitive photos and videos, then you're going to want to make sure that it's password protected so no one else can look at it. Encrypting these files with a password gives you the peace of mind that even if your computer is compromised via an SSH attack or command injection, that the hackers, while they're on their computer, they can't look at these files. However, as in anything else with cybersecurity, if it has a password, it can be brute forced. And today, we're going to learn about a, a file brute forcing tool called Zydra and do a quick demonstration brute forcing a zip file and looking at the contents inside. In order to follow this tutorial, you're just going to need a computer. Today, we're going to be using an Ubuntu computer. And if you have any problems following the tutorial, you can check out the article linked in the description. Let's get started. So before we go ahead and get started using Zydra, let's go ahead and do a quick view of how to actually encrypt zip files, which is something that you might not do every day. So when look inside my folder here, I can see that I have this penguin.jpg uh, file that I actually want to go ahead and encrypt. Let's actually just go take a look at it really quick. And it's just the null byte logo. And so let's go ahead and put a password behind this because we can't have all you hackers going ahead and seeing our new logo. So to do that, we can just use the zip tool, which should already be installed on um, your computer. I'm using Ubuntu here. If not, you can do a simple apt git or whatever your respective package manager is. So I'm going to do zip tac e for encrypt, and it's going to be the name of the output file first. So I'm just going to call this password protected.zip, and then the name of all the files going into it, and that's just going to be penguin.jpg, and then we're going to name a password for it. So let's make it a secure password. And now I can see if I want to unzip. Oh, so now let's see that it actually created the zip file. So as we can see, we have password protected. Let's go ahead and unzip password protected. And it's going to make sure that we put in our secure password before we go ahead and unzip it. And you're actually going to want to make sure you go ahead and delete the original file because that will be left unencrypted. So now we can go ahead and have our, our penguin file there again to look at. So let's go ahead and remove those files so that it doesn't clog up everything. And let's go ahead and actually get started using Zydra. So if you go to the article, which is linked in the description, you can go ahead and find the link to the GitHub page for Zydra. And once you're on this GitHub page, we can just go ahead and clone this URL. And as you can see, all it does is download the Zydra folder which gives us the zydra.py uh, file. So because we're mostly interested in the zydra.py file, let's go ahead and move zydra.py up one. Oops, gotta move it. Um, and let's rename it with a lowercase zydra. Because I don't like my file starting with uppercases. It annoys me. So now we're back in our starting directory and we can see we have a lowercase zydra.py file, which is the file we're actually going to be using to brute force these passwords. So let's go ahead and just try to make sure Zydra works. And it does use Python 3, so you have to make sure that you're actually using Python 3. Because on my computer, if I just type in Python, it defaults to Python 2.7. So let's use Python 3, Zydra.py, h, And this shows you the various options for Zydra such as using tacf to specify which file you're going to try to brute force, and then um, the difference between dictionary mode and brute force mode, which is what we're going to be covering very shortly, and other options that are included with Zydra. It's actually a very simple program, so there is not much to say about it. So let's go ahead and start trying to do a simple brute force. So we have this, I'll show you in the file manager, we have this secret pictures.zip file, and I really want to see it's in here. Now I can see the name of these pictures, but I have no idea what these file, the password to these files are. So I can never actually see what these are. The only way I'm actually going to be able to see these pictures, not just the name and the size of them and other various metadata, but to actually see the picture, the most interesting part, I'm going to have to brute force this password. 
So I can't extract it or anything like that. Like if I try to extract it here, it's just gonna ask me for the password again. So let's go ahead and brute force the secret pictures.zip file. So um, let's go ahead and close Nautilus, clear screen again. And if we use Python 3, Zydra.zip, and we are going to specify the file secret pictures, secret pictures.zip. And then we, get, we specify the file. And let's just say we want to limit this to letters and digits. So all uppercase and lowercase letters and all digits. So we can specify tack B to specify the car type. So let's do add tack B and then letters, comma, digits, no spaces. And then you're gonna to wanna to specify the minimum number of digits. So let's go from one uh, digit if I have a really short password and the maximum with, uh, let's do six digits. Oh, um, not zydra.zip, it's going to be zydra.py. Oh, and I can see that I spelled letters wrong. So now it's going to start cracking the password. And if you go up here, oh, right here, it's going to list the number of possible passwords, which let's see, three, six, it's like 5.7 times 10 to the 10th or over a uh, 57 billion different passwords it's gonna try. So it's gonna take quite a while to just brute force it like this, but it's trying every single combination of letters and numbers, uppercase and lowercase, between one and six digits. So it's gonna take quite a while. Um, that is not the most effective method. A more effective method is to use a dictionary of commonly used passwords rather, rather than a brute force, which includes a bunch of different garbage. This can take quite a while, depending on the power, the power of your CPU. But if you go ahead and download a, a dictionary of common passwords, which you can find on this GitHub page, and let's download the top 1000. If we, as we can see, these are a bunch of different, very simple, very common passwords, but it might just work as a lot of people might use these as their own passwords. So if we go to the raw file and we copy this link and we go back to our terminal. And now if we do wget on that link, we can see that we have that password list on our own computer now. And now we can tell Zydra to use this dictionary on that zip file and see if any matches are there, drastically cutting it down from the um, 5.7 times 10 to the 10th number of passwords to just 1,000 different passwords to try. So let's go ahead and do that. So Python 3, Zydra.py, we're specifying the file we are targeting. Again, so we're gonna do secret files. What's that the name of it? Or was it secret pictures? Secret pictures. So Python 3, Zydra.py, uh, secret pictures. And we're gonna specify a dictionary, which is dark web 2017 top1000.txt. And as you can see, it's only 999 different passwords, and it already found a match with a very simple password of ABC123 and it looks like this person wasn't trying to protect their very secret passwords. So let's go ahead and open Nautilus again and try and look at what these secret pictures are. So now, ABC, one, two, three. As we can see, it worked and we can see the pictures that this person was trying to keep secret from the rest of the world. There seems to be a very cute cat and an idea for a very bad movie. So yeah, that's a very quick demonstration of Zydra. It's a very simple, but very, very effective program for trying to brute force any password protected files. And you can do a similar methodology to target PDFs or RAR files as well. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out our website where we have hundreds of free articles and videos, as well as premium paid content like the Ethical Hacking Certification Bundle which features pen testing with OWASP Zap, WordPress hacking and hardening, and the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst prep course. Check out the link in the description below. I hope that this demonstration displayed the importance of using an important password to protect your own files. In this instance, Zydra is only so effective because the user that we're using it against chose a very, very bad password. If they chose something a little more secure and they use a password manager such as LastPass, it might have been able to circumvent Zydra. If you have any problems with this tutorial, you can check out the article, which is linked in the description. 
If you have any ideas for a future episode, hit me up on Twitter, at Nick Gottschall. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.